So in case you missed it right at the very end there. So you right click on the bars. Notice how all the bars are highlighted. You choose select data and you want to edit the horizontal category labels to be these. Don't choose the average points per game. If you do that, then it'll make that first bar average points per game, which isn't what you want. Choose the one all the way down through the 13 and say, okay. Oops, I must have done it wrong. There it is. Say, okay. I could see that I did it wrong because right up here at the top, it was saying average points per game still, and I didn't want that and click okay. And there we go. We've got a frequency histogram all done. All right now we also need to make a relative frequency histogram of the same data. So we can do this the long way or the short way. I mean the long way would be to repeat what we just did. Oops, hold on one second. There we are. So we could repeat what we just did um, or we could grab the picture, see how it's ringed around it, and I could copy and then I can click on some other cell and paste. And there I have a duplicate of what I already did. And then I can just go over here, see how if you let your mouse hover over the blue region, see how it, you can see the blue box there? And I get this double, well actually it's a four pointed arrow. So I click down with my left mouse button and I drag it over to the right to the relative frequency and boom, automatically. It's sort of a cheating way, but that's all right. I mean, if you want to do the long way, you can go through and do the same thing that we did already. And I'm going to have to change this. I'm going to double click up here right in front of the word frequency and add the word relative. And of course, to make the bars different, let me format the data series. I want to fill them with, I don't know, I'll make them green. There we go. That way they're nice and pretty. All right, and I'm going to move this graph out of here. You can always slide over with the scroll bar to the right and left to see it. But I've got both graphs made. And there we go. So very much the same graphs I did here, just with different colors. Um, notice that when Excel constructs these graphs, the values on the horizontal axis are the classes rather than the individual numbers. The left edge of the first bar, for example, is 1, and its right edge is 3. OK, so what I'm talking about here is Excel's not very good about um, making the number line ticks matter. So what you have to know is that this bar right here, this is one right there, that tick mark. And over here, it's it's really three because it's the beginning of the next class. So 2.9999999 forever right, is right before it. So this line right here is at three. This one right here is five, this one's seven, and so on. Um, and that means this over here is 15 because this one's 13, right? So what number represents the left edge of the last bar? So this is the last bar right here. Its left edge is the number 13, right? right here, that edge right there, that line. Now what number represents the right edge? Well, I just said it, but it would be 15. See, 14.99999 is like infinitesimally close. Well, actually, technically it goes on forever, so it is 15, but... I don't want to get into it. So it's 15 right here is the end of the. So this edge right here is 15. All right, what do the graphs reveal about the JCC basketball team? Well, at this point, <laughs> most um, scorers are scoring in the 1 to 4.999 range, right? And we have a couple people that are scoring way high. Matter of fact, you can see it over here. It's two people are scoring in the 13 to 14.9. So there are two um, players scoring or averaging, here with this, averaging um, 13 to 14.9 points per game. Most players are in the two lowest bars, so 1 to about 4.9, 1 to 4.9 range. All right? I mean, you could say other things, too, like, you know, the class that has the most players is the 1 to 2.9 range. Um, there's also another bump here. A couple players are scoring in the 9 to 10.9 range, et cetera, et cetera. Plenty of stuff to talk about. All right. We're done with the histograms for now, and we are going to move into stem and leaf plots next time. See you then.